Peter Glasser, visionary engineer and pioneer of the triple bottom line. Peter Glasser is a world-renowned scientist and aerospace engineer. He is best known for his creation in the 1960s of solar power satellites, the idea of harnessing solar energy in space and transmitting it to Earth. It was an environmentally friendly alternative to the energy systems of the day, but his concept actually went a step beyond that to better serve the health and well-being of society and to improve the economy. So for his efforts, Peter Glasser was actually a pioneer of the triple bottom line concept of social, environmental, and economic responsibility decades before the concept came into use. Peter Glasser was born in 1923 in Zetek, Czechoslovakia. He immigrated to America in 1948 and earned his master's and doctoral degrees in mechanical engineering at Columbia University. Throughout his engineering career, Glasser made important contributions to many famous space ventures, including the Apollo 11 mission, which placed the first human beings on the moon. In 1968, Glasser first presented his concept of the solar power satellite. Giant solar panels in space would harness solar energy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without the interruption of night or the hindrance of cloud, rain, or shade they would eliminate the need for massive batteries to store the solar energy. Glasser became a passionate advocate for solar power satellites as a solution to global energy and environmental problems, writing articles and giving lectures and interviews on the topic for over 30 years. He is seen here in this photo on the left, presenting his concept to school children at the Boston Science Museum in the early 1970s. Glasser's passion for environmental stewardship came out of his own dramatic experiences in childhood. Growing up in Czechoslovakia, Glasser's father owned a factory which produced equipment for coal mines. When young Peter visited a coal mine and saw the miners coming out completely covered in black soot, it had a tremendous impact on him. And later, when he learned about the death tolls from mining and the horrible diseases that miners suffered, he decided, that's a hell of a price to pay for us to use coal. Glasser dedicated his career to working on technologies that would not contribute to environmental problems. Glasser was also very knowledgeable about the problems of nuclear power, including radioactive waste and, once again, the dangerous conditions faced by miners. He envisioned solar power satellites as an opportunity to create energy without the life-threatening effects to miners or the dangers of nuclear radiation. Glasser was a visionary leader and motivator who inspired many others to join the cause of solar power satellites. He was the man who stoked the fire, saying, I know where we've got to go, and then I have to get the people who want to go there with me. Glasser also saw the future of space exploration as a collaborative international venture with many countries working together. In the 1970s, he worked with the governments of Japan, Germany, France, and Britain to develop his technology. Glasser was also very practical in his visioning. When others were imagining a future of electric cars, Glasser asked, where are we going to get the energy to power them? Glasser's revolutionary concept of solar power satellites came in the late 1960s, a time of massive social upheaval. The modern environmental movement was taking shape, galvanized in the US by awareness of hydrogen bomb testing on Bikini Atoll, oil spills off the coast of California, and pollution of the Great Lakes. Also at the time, energy consumption was skyrocketing. Demand on the grid was growing faster than production, and the United States experienced blackouts from coast to coast. Shortages of coal and natural gas further compounded the problem, and oil production throughout the world began to peak. A new form of energy was desperately needed. The 1970s brought even greater problems. The oil embargo of 1973 created a global energy crisis, raising the price of oil from $2 to $12 a barrel. Americans waited in long lines for gas while inflation soared. The economy stalled and U.S. President Nixon urged the country to conserve resources and develop new sources of energy. Glasser's plan of space-based solar power was even more appealing now than ever, and he brought his ideas to NASA. Glasser's intention was to merge the goals of space exploration with solar power satellites, 
sharing resources and technology so each group could lower their costs. The plan worked. In 1976, NASA contracted two major corporations, Boeing and Rockwell, to develop a detailed design of a solar power satellite. The research continued, and from 78 to 81, the Department of Energy and NASA jointly conducted a $50 million feasibility study. However, fate would shift against Glasser and his vision. In the late 70s, the oil embargo ended and gas prices fell, eliminating the need for cheaper sources of energy. In 1981, the election of President Reagan brought drastic cuts to government funding of research, and the solar power satellite plan was scrapped. But Glasser and his supporters persevered. They continued to write, research, design, and lobby for funding to develop solar power satellites through government research and through private companies. Although Glasser is retired now, the work he began in the 1960s and the passion he invested has inspired numerous engineers and scientists to continue in his footsteps. Currently, many universities, space agencies, and corporations are working hard to develop practical, affordable versions of solar power satellites. Peter Glasser not only invented a new technology, he was a visionary who saw a world that could be better. He created a vision and a technical blueprint to produce energy without harming people or the environment and to do so in an economically favorable way a true triple bottom line solution.